All right, hello ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, Bang the Monkey back again with another unboxing video of Modern Horizons 3 Play Boosters. Oh, wow, so this has turned out to be a fantastic set. And I have actually already opened um, quite a number of products for the set. I've opened two pre-release kits and three play boosters. And really the experience of opening these products has been excellent so far. And I couldn't just you know help myself and uh, I decided to buy a couple of more play boosters to unbox with you guys. Um, there's so much power in this particular set. Um, and I've actually picked up quite a number of cards. There are still a couple more chase cards that I'm looking to get. But overall, this is a set that I think is worth it to invest in. Uh, because while it is, again, supposed to be Modern Horizons for Modern, this is actually um, perfect for Commander and probably the strongest set of the year. Maybe even in the last, I don't know, maybe since um, uh, probably Lord of the Rings, right? Uh, and there's just so much value up and down the uncommons, rares, and mythics. So many good cards and quite a number, of, not, not a lot, but quite a number of good reprints as well. Plus the new um, um, cycles like the flares, the lands, um, just have so much value in Commander. So I'm, I'm quite uh, convinced that this is a very good product and willing to invest in a couple of more play boosters to sort of build up my collection in this. Uh, because this will definitely tide me over for the next few years in terms of commander staples. Okay, so let's just get right through it. By the way, um, my LGS did give me a promo pack to open, so I'll open that as a bonus round later. But let's get to opening this particular box. So for me, I've already managed to hit all of the flares um, and some of the, uh, well, and, and all of the um, fetches actually. Uh, the fetch pulls here are so far that I had opened in, in my boxes are pretty amazing. I think I was able to open my 15 uh, fetches in total. So I believe that uh, probably we'll get a couple more fetches. But what I'm looking for here would be some specific cards like um, Ugin's Binding, Ugin's Labyrinth, uh, and some of the Flipwalkers, and the two big Eldrazi's, Ulamog and Emrakul. Uh, those are the ones that I don't have yet, but otherwise, I've picked up most, if not all, of the chase cards already for this particular set. Okay, so let's get right to it. Let's transfer these packs out here. All right, here we go. So let me put this away. I think this should be it. So again, let's put them over here, out of frame, and let's begin with the proceedings. First pack, here we go. What do we get here? So again, these are the Japanese packs, so I'll start now with the start, just so that we don't um, take too long of a video to, to do all this. Okay, so Island, we have a foil retrofitted transmorgant. And for our first rare, we have a Primal Prayers. Okay, so we'll put that over here. And then uncommon, we have a Cephalid Colosseum, which I think is a uh, okay land uh, in the uncommon slot. So I'll put that over here. Okay, and I think for the rest, we have some uncommons there. And commons here. Okay, I'll just put the commons and commons out of frame. Because this is a 36 pack box and we're certainly going to have uh, a lot of cards to be featured here. Okay, next up. So we did get Ugin's Binding, but in the, um, uh, what do you call it, the art card, fortunately. So we have a Charitable Levy in foil. And our rare would be a Springheart Nantuko, which is an okay card, I think. A uh, good um, enchantment feature card. And uh, would go in, in very specific decks, um, like Enchantress decks. And we have a second rare that would be a Devourer of Destiny. So it's one of those Eldrazi's, not the ones that we're looking for, the big guys, but still. Um, good one, okay. And then Shrieking Drake. Uncommon, Hunger Tide Rises, Signature Slam, Static Prism, and Commons there. Okay, third pack. 
let's try to do this quickly because this is uh, such a big BP set and multiple rares and commons. I think in one pack I did get four. Um, so that's, you know, you know that you're gonna have quite a number of uh, rares and uh, mythics here. So uh, foil, uh, full art mountain with an Eldrazi there in the back. We have a foil common that would be uh, airy auxiliary. Okay. And for our rare, we have a party thrasher. Okay. And we have a second rare that would be a emerald medallion. Okay. So I will put that emerald medallion over here. Um, prices have gone down quite a bit for these medallions. So I'm not going to put them in the cool rare pile. A couple of um, commons there and our commons here. One thing up that I think I can't be said enough in this set is the fact that we have these MDFCs. We have like 20 MDFCs, um, two for each color, and then we have I think 10 for the, um, uh, what would you call this, multicolor spells. Um, and these are just great auto includes, right? I think this is going to sort of set the standard for uh, um, uh, cards, I think, in Commander moving forward because of the multi-functional uh, appeal of these MDFCs. Okay, so we have a Foil Angel of Ruins. And we have our first Mythic. Ooh! Oh my god, that's it. That's what we were looking for. Ugin's Binding in the Borderless Treatment. That is a beautiful card. So it's a 3 to cast instant um, with the Void. Return target non-land permit you don't control to its owner's hand. And whenever you cast a color spell with mana value 7 or greater, you may exile Ugin's Binding from your graveyard. When you do, return each non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. So it's like a... Um, it's like a uh, Cyclonic Rift. Um, slightly different take to it. But yeah, so definitely the, this is the card that I was chasing after. Uh, so just looking now for Ugin's Labyrinth and the, the two big Eldrazi's. Uh, and I'll put this over here in the very cool mythic pile. Okay, and then uncommons here. Again, nice to see those MTFCs. I wouldn't mind just, you know, um, uh, uh, hoarding those MTFCs because they will be of use in any commander deck moving forward. Okay, so here we go. Interestingly enough, right, we, we picked up the art card of Ugin's Binding. I think that sort of foretold that we were going to we are going to get the actual card itself over here. Okay, so, planes, and then for rare foil, we have Aphelia, Exuberant Shepherd, a uh, good doggy, and she is a butte in foil, uh, pack foil. Okay, and then for the second rare, we have a Monumental Henge. So I'll put Aphelia over here, because I like dogs. A Monumental Henge from the land cycle. Uh, okay, and I'll put that over here. Uh, yeah, I'll put that over here. Okay, Barbarian Ring. Nice MDFC, Snow Covered Wastes. That's cool. Okay, nice. So you started off with uh, some heat here in the first half of the first stack. Although, really, it's just Ugin's Binding that, that's given us uh, any value. But again, for me, that, that's enough because that's what I was looking for. Okay, let's move on. We have a Foil Common Sneaky Snacker. Fairy Rogue. And then for the rare, we have a White Orchid Phantom. Cool. And Worn Power Stone Uncommon for the rest of the cards. Okay, we are now in pack number six or seven. I think that's where the second half of the first stack. Uh, we're moving along quickly. So we have a cat token. Hopefully it means that we get a Ocelot Pride. That's another uh, uh, another one I'm looking for. Okay. Uh, etched Slip in foil. For the rare, we have a Thief of Existence. Okay, it's one of these Eldrazi's. And then a Priest of Titania. Um, for the uncommon. And an Evolution Witness in um, retro frame. Collective Resistance is actually a good uncommon. I think that's Sleeper there because um, you can remove a artifact 
enchantment or give your creature uh, hexproof and indestructible, which is, I mean, th 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 there's so much value in that, right? So much flexibility there. So it's, it's so funny, right? Because for Commander, this is this is actually the set to get for the year. I don't think there's going to be any other set that, that'll have as good cards for Commander as this set. But it's called Modern Horizons 3. And they should have just called this Commander Masters 2 or Commander Legends 3 or something like that. Okay, we have a Foil Forest. We have an Aether Spike in Foil. For the rare, we have a Wrath of the Skies. Okay, so for the rares, we're not getting really much value. Um, but we did hit that Mythic earlier. But we have a second rare upcoming here. We have a Sylvan Safekeeper again. I think these are some of the lower value rares for the set. Happy to get these MDFCs. Okay. So, so far we don't have a uh, rare card, I think, which is above like five, six dollars. Hopefully, we can turn that around in the next couple of packs. So, Jolted Awake. Then we hit a Mythic. So, we have Flage Titan of Fire's Fury. So, this one I don't have yet. So, I'm quite happy to get this. Uh, so this is a 3 to cast, um, Boros, Elder Giant, Legendary 6-6. Six, six. There's Battlefield Sacrifice unless, unless it escaped. Whenever Flage enters the Battlefield or attacks, deals 3 damage to any target and you gain 3 life. So escape, uh, red, red, white, white, exile 5 other cards from your graveyard. Okay, so Mythic number 2. Uh, nice to get that, but I'll put that over here. Okay, we have Nesting Grounds. Sundering Eruption, okay, nice MDFCs there. Throb and Charm is also a, a good card, I would say. Um, two to cast, deal damage equal to twice number of creatures. You control the target creature, you can destroy an enchantment, or you can wipe in the graveyards. And this is also a pretty good gift of the Viper. I mean, even on the common stat, there's really powerful cards here, um, which we shouldn't uh, sleep on. Okay, so far, uh, no Eldrazi's except that one over here, which is not the, the one we're looking for. No fetches as of yet. We do have Ugin's Binding um, and a Foil Philia and a Flage, but nothing yet uh, of high value. Okay, Breather Last, Common Foil. Uh, for the rare, we have a Eldrazi Line Breaker. So not Eldrazi we're looking for, unfortunately. So I'll put that over here. Deep analysis, Null Elemental Blast is a good um, uncommon. I do like that. Uh, auto include, I think, especially in Commander. Because for sure, um, your opponents, unless they're playing a multicolored spell, will be, I mean, a, a monocolored uh, um, deck. They would probably have quite a number of multicolored um, spells or permanents, especially in Commander. So I think that one's a cheap counter spell or removal. Okay, so Angel token there. Scurry of Gremlins in foil. And for the rare, I think this is a fetch land. It is, it's Windswept Heath. Cool. I'll put that over here. Then we have Junk Diver. Rush of Inspiration, again, these NDFCs. Causalex Unsealing is actually also uh, an interesting card. Okay, last pack for the stack. Okay, here we go. Psychic Frog for the art card. Uh, we have a Foil Shattered Landscape. And we have a rare. It's Kudo, King Among Bears, in the Showcase Art version. So it's the uh, sort of the profile art. Very cute bear there. So I'll put that in the cool pile just because it's special treatment. Okay, and then sink this into stupor. Good MDFC there. Nice. Even in these uh, uncommons and commons, seeing value here all over the place, which is pretty good. Okay, so we've done the first stack so far. Uh, we do have Ugin's Binding, uh, which is one of the chase cards that I'm looking for. We have one fetch, which is Windswept Heath. A uh, couple of uh, sort of bulk rares, but trust me, they have value. Uh, and then we have Philia in foil and Kudo in the showcase art. 
and uh, uh, three land, uh, two lands um, in the land cycle here from the rare and uncommon, and a null elemental blast, which is uh, has some value in it. Okay, so we're starting off with the second stack. Here we go, bird token, Kami of Jealous Thirst in foil. For the rare, we have a Strict Serenade. Cool, this is a, a high value card in blue. Um, and it's basically swan song for artifact creatures and planeswalkers. So that is a good pick up there. So I'll put that over here in the cool rares. Okay, and then we have a Marionette Apprentice in the retro art. That's nice. Uh, and, and that's actually a pretty strong card too. Um, because when you think about it, right, this uh, Marionette Apprentice, um, Fabricate one, and whenever another creature or artifact control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. So if you have an Aristocrats deck or a um, Artifact Matters deck where Nadir's Nightblade also uh, uh, would be of value, um, yeah, you could do a killing with Marionette's Apprentice. Okay, so next pack. So we have Aslask. Um, or asshat for the art card, you are playing. We have a rare foil, it's Eldrazi Linebacker. Um, so we have a, a, a duplicate here. And for the second rare, we have a Psychic Frog. Psycho Frog. Um, I'll, I'll just put that there, okay. Legend Dragon, Eldrazi Ravager, okay. So kind of a weak pack there. But let's continue on. Quite happy about Strix Serenade. Okay, proxy card. We have a foil Malevolent Rumble. For the rare, it is an Aether Revolt. Okay, so we're getting quite a number of these low value rares, unfortunately. Um, but still, getting quite a number of MDFCs. All right. Let's move on to the next pack. <clears throat> Zombie army. Foil planes. For the common, we have an expanding ooze. For the rare, we have a Chthonian nightmare. Okay. And we have a second rare. It is Urza's incubator. Nice. I was also looking for this card. Sort of forgot that this is part of the set. And finally, do have this. It's gonna go into one of my travel decks. Perfect. Okay, and then MDFC. So I'll put this under the cool rares there. That, that is a fantastic reprint. Okay. Okay, we're starting to get some of the cards that I have not yet picked up from the other unboxings that I've done. So glad to be able to get those cards. Still looking for the spaghetti monsters, the big guys, but have not yet had the luck of picking them up. Okay, so we have a Reckless Pyro Surfer, and for the rare, we have a Flare of Cultivation. Cool, so picking up more uh, flares, and I'll put that over here. Uh, Buried Alive, and the other uncommons there. Again, nice to see some MDFCs. Moving on, so we're now in the uh, second half or end of the middle of the second stack. One fetch so far, two mythics, which is I think we're, we're, we're quite behind compared to the other boxes that I've opened. So maybe in the second half, we're gonna, you know, um, step in some gas and, and, and we're gonna see this, uh, uh, Probably catch up, or at least that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, so we have a deceptive landscape in foil. For the rare, we have a Nadu. Okay, uh, I do have a copy of this already, but nice to have another because this is quite a strong uh, commander and definitely will be sought after. I just started this in into my uh, um, Ivy Needful Spell Thief deck. Um, so I, at least it's sort of like I have a lead singer and a backup singer. Um, so I'll, I'll try it out first with um, with Ivy, but I can then switch it up with Ndu and it should still work perfectly because it's targeting 
um, creatures you control that you know um, I think that where the value is for for those two cards perfect okay so I'll put that over here in the cool rare pile so far only two mythics again we're, we're quite behind um, in the mythic department but let's see if we can catch up so now we are officially in the second half of this box hoping to catch up in the mythics and get some of those fantastic spaghetti monsters all right amphibian downpour rare okay put that over here oh wow we have a uh, mythic it's jyoti moag ancient um, we have some commander action going uh so I, I don't have this card yet but it is a forecast simic elemental legendary creature 2-4 uh, when this enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 green forest triad land creature token for each time you cast your commander from the command zone this game. And at the beginning of each combat, creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is Jyoti's power. Okay, so this is a uh, Simic um, Land Matters deck, I suppose. Uh, land Matters Commander. So I'll put that over here with the special treatment. Okay. Okay, good. So we hit a mythic uh, instantly on the uh, start of the second half of this box. And hopefully the gravy train just keeps going. Swamp borderless. Okay. Uh, uncommon worm coil larva. And then, ooh, we have a black uh, card in retro. And we have a Chthonian Nightmare. Now, I was hoping for... Uh, the was that the Warren something, the Goblin, but fine, I'll take this. I know that this has value. But speaking of which, there's another black card rare. It's a Jet Medallion. Cool. In uh, in the showcase art. Nice. And that's pr pretty gnarly, uh, slightly questionable <laughs> art right there. Cool. Okay. And we have a, a MDFC in black. Okay, nice. This is really good. Okay, I think we're starting to pick up some steam here. And we have to catch up on the fetch department and the mythics, we're, we're still behind. At this point, in one of my boxes, I already about like six or seven mythics. Okay, so island, uh, electrozoa common. Okay, speaking of mythics, we have mythic number four, and that would be Ugin's Binding in the um, pack art. Okay, so I I, I wouldn't mind that. Uh, I was hoping for an Ugin's uh, Labyrinth, but this is fine. <laughs> okay, maybe I can just uh, trade, right? Okay, I'll put that over there. So Meltdown, okay. Okay, moving on. So, okay, looks like we are starting to pick up here. Still uh, just one fetch so far. Um, Foil-inspired inventor. Not really a fan of these um, energy counters, so I'm not really looking to them. That's why I'm not too keen on this Catonian Nightmare uh, card. Okay, so inspired inventor. Then for the rare, we have a Spy Master's Vault, which is also actually, a, a, I think, the, the best um, rare land for this cycle um, for at least an MH3. And we have a second rare, it's blue. We have Estrid's Invocation. Mm -hmm. So three to cast enchantment. You may have Estrid's Invocation enter the battlefield as a copy of an enchantment you control, except it has the behavior upkeep and may exile this enchantment if you do return to the battlefield under its control. Ooh, okay. So you can sort of have it come back as one other thing or the other. Nice, okay. I, I do like that. I will put that over here because I think I have some uses for that card. Okay, and then MDFCs. There, okay. Here we go. Last two packs for the stack. They're definitely much better than the first uh, stack. But, in terms of rares, but we still have no uh, fetches. Okay. Depth Defiler in foil. For the rare, we have a Emperor of Bones, which is an okay rare. And Uncommon, Annoyed Altasaur, 
Yeah, okay. So we are now in the last pack for the second stack. And I'm feeling a little bit worried that this box might be a dud. Okay, nice to have an Ugin's binding, two of them actually. But I'm hoping that maybe this mythic can sort of uh, help us catch up and it would be... <laughs> okay, it's another Jyoti Moak Ancient uh, from the Commander. And, and again, we, we actually do have that already. So this is another duplicate. Okay, uh, so maybe we can um, catch up with a rare here. We have an Argent Dice. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is much value. And then we have a Victimize there. Versus Cave. Nice, nice uncommon land there. Okay. So that's it for the second stack. Um, you can see that we actually picked up quite a number of good rares um, in the second stack. And we hit well, four mythics, I think. But we still have not yet gotten the uh, fetches. So I'm targeting maybe four more mythics in the last stack. Maybe one fetch. And hopefully I can get a spaghetti monster uh, in this pack or in this stack. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So Fanatic of Ronas. That's actually a very good card. Uh, I will definitely use this token. We have a Foil Full Art Land. Okay, and then a Foil Nadir's Nightblade. Oh, we have a, uh, what do you call this? A retro Frame. It looks like it is a Flooded Strand. Okay, so um, fetch number two, finally. And a rare behind it, we have Kirik, Son of Yogmoth, now Modern Legal. Um, so I'll put that over here. Okay, next pack, here we go. So finally, we were starting to pick up on the uh, fetches. Okay, we have a Thief of Existence in foil. Uh, not the Eldrazi that we're looking for. And we have a Disruptor Flute as well for the rare. And then an Deer's Night Blade. Okay, so this one is kind of a sad pack. Come on, baby. Copy land. Okay, full art land. Foil, Cyclops, Superconductor. And for we have a mythic. Okay, mythic number six now. Oh, hello. That's it. That's what we were looking for. M. Rakul, the world anew. So 12 to cast Eldrazi 12 12. When you cast this spell, gain control of all creatures, target player controls. As flying protections from spells and from permanents that were cast this turn. And when M. Rakul, the world anew, leaves the battlefield, sacrifice all creatures you control. And Madness pay six. That's it. We, we found it. I think at this point for me, everything else is gravy. Um, yeah. So we'll put this over here. That's a lovely mythic. Hogan's Binding. Two of them, in fact. And Emra Cool. So what I'm looking for now is just the uh, Ulamog and Hogan's uh, Labyrinth, which is the last. Good hit. So, so we, we've stepped on uh, um, some really powerful cards here, and we're starting to um, hit gas. Okay, let's see if we can continue with the luck. For the rare, we have a Shilgengar. Okay, and nothing beyond that. So I'll put that over here. Ooh, okay, we have a Mythic, Koram the Undertaker. So this is a card that I don't have yet um, from Commander. So uh, uh, one black, red, green gets X zero, where X is the greatest power among creature cards in all graveyards and where it attacks each player that's a card. During each of your turns, you may play a land and cast a spell from among cards and graveyards put there from libraries this turn. Mm. Okay, so I'll put that over here. 
Nice, okay. Cool, cool, cool. So we were able to hit mythic number... What is this? Number seven. Awesome. So it's, it looks like it's the mythics here that are, you know, uh, really pulling us up in terms of value. Okay. Breaker of Creation in Foil. And for the rare, we have a Dream Tide Whale. I think this is this is a good card. Uh, yeah, for me, that, that's a good card. Okay, we have a second rare. It is a Savine's Reclamation. Okay, so not much value there. Okay. And commons, commons there. Okay, we are in the middle of the last stack. We've hit the Emerald Pool, we've hit a Flood Strand in Retro Frame. And again, for me now everything is gravy, but we'd still love to get more value here. Maybe a Mythic or two. Okay, we have another uh, Retro Frame Black card, and it would be Necro Dominance! Nice, this is a, a, a high value card for sure. I think it was like $20, $25. Um, yeah, good pickup for us, good Mythic. I'll put that over here. Okay, a couple of uh, MDFC. And some good uncommons there. Okay, so we have uh, eight mythics so far, which I think is more or less the average now. What I'm just a little bit uh, unhappy about is we're a little bit behind on the, um, what do you call this, on the um, fetches. And at the same time, the yeah, good rares, uh, not as strong, but love the fact that we have an Urza's incub Incubator there, which is something that I've been looking for. Okay, so moving on. Seeding Landscape in Foil. For the rare, we have a Flare of Denial. I think this is the highest value Flare card. Um, so that one goes into the Cool Pile, Meltdown, Synthetic Stupor. Okay. Last five packs. Okay, hopefully we hit some absolute bombs here. Maybe Ulamog, please. Okay, Foil Fangs of Colonia. And for the rare, we have a Null Drifter. Okay, Null Drifter for the rare. Okay, I'll put that over here. That's kind of a cool card. Okay, last four. By the way, we still have a promo pack of Thunder Junction um, as a bonus round to this unboxing. And maybe we can pick up something good there. Cranial Ram, which is a uh, Xenomorph uh, homage. Bogart Crawler uh, in foil. For the rare, we have a Winter Moon. Okay, Blood Moon and Winter Orb mashup. And you have a second rare. It's a Jet Medallion. Okay, second Jet Medallion for the box. And a Snow Covered Wastes, Borderless. Beautiful looking land. Okay, um, and then Uncommon Scomments. Okay, last three. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. So Harry Gast, Art, Swampo, Foil, Eldrazi, Repurposer. For the rare, we have a Flare of Malice. Okay, so we're starting to pick up on those flares. Okay, deep analysis. All right. Okay, now we're down to the last two packs. I would love to get um, one more fetch and one more mythic. So let's see if we're gonna hit that. Bountiful landscape for the rare. It's a 2 2. Philia the Exuberant Shepherd. Okay, in the non in the non foil. Okay, and a meteoric mace. 
Okay, so it's gonna be a choice of either a fetch or a mythic in this one. Come on, uh, a Johnny. Actually, one thing that I also have not yet picked up quite a number of cards yet would be the Flipwalkers. So, if this is a Flipwalker like a Johnny, I would love to have that too. Okay, we have a full art land. Uh, and is this a okay, foil? Uh, foul Strike. And is this a mythic? It is a mythic. It is. Oh, that's it! That's it, Ugin's Labyrinth in the last pack, last mythic for this box. Fantastic. Okay, that's it. And then we have a Cephalid Coliseum to close the show. All right, I, I guess this this box turned out to be pretty good. Um, so we'll just do a quick recap so far. I think the where this box shines really in the mythic department. Uh, as you can see, we have two Ugin's bindings. We have Emrakul, we have Ugin's Labyrinth. I just don't have Ulamog, that's the only one I don't have. I've caused like already two Vetches, which is okay. Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't have um, a lot of uh, uh, strong rares, unlike in the other boxes. Um, but we did get three flares. We got Urza's Incubator and Strict Serenader that, that I've been uh, um, trying to look, look for. Um, and we have that retro frame uh, nightmare and the full art showcase jet medallion. Um, we have Spy Master's Vault, two Cephalid Coliseums, Monumental Hand, and the Ursus Cave, plus the No Elemental Blast. Okay, so to end things, we have a promo pack of OTJ. Let's see if we're gonna be lucky and get something good from this promo pack. Okay, I'm gonna start with the middle first because that's the sort of the promo card. We have an Honest Rustine promo, which is I think a, a good card. Okay, we have a rare, and that would be a Bruce Tarl Roving Rancher, okay, in the promo. And behind that would be a Mythic from, um, Neon Dynasty. It's a Planeswalker. It's the Wandering Emperor. Wow, good value. Good value there. Okay, so um, just to end things, we have. Uh, okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, ten mythics if you include the uh, promo card of uh, the Wandering Emperor. We have two uh, fetches. We have a few good. Um, rares, including three uh, flares. We have Winter Moon, um, Jet Metallion, uh, Chthonia Nightmare, and Nadu. Uh, but where I I'm quite happy about is uh, Strict Serenade and Ursus Incubator. And then for the Mythics, I think this is where I am happy about. So we did get these guys. Check that out. That's that's gonna be a lot of fun, and then of course we put the necro dominance in there um, for value as well. Okay, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. I do have one more box to go, and I'm hoping that maybe that's where we get Ulamog. Now, until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care and bye bye.